When I was 10 years old, I wrote a business plan. I'm going to be a choreographer. I'm going to have a building. I'm going to have a dance studio. I'm going to get this at the high school. I'm going to do all this stuff. And this was my goals. Like, this was my dreams. This was whatever. And two, two times that fall, fell into my lap. Well, it fell into my lap once, and then I kind of got messed up, all the situations around me. And it, like, got ripped out of my hands. And I was so angry at God. Like, I, I thought it was from the Lord to have all this stuff come true. Everything as an 18 year old, uh, 18 year old kid was going to start a dance team at the high school. Just like I said, I was promised a building. The guy was looking into a building that I was going to hire everybody, run it, do the hours, do everything, my own choreography studio and everything just as I had imagined it. Had it fall into my lap and I was like thanking God like, oh yeah, you know, thinking it was good. You know, I wasn't even, I was a believer, but I didn't fall. I wasn't really into the word like I wasn't seeking God like I should have I was still young in the faith and uh it got ripped I mean all this stuff started falling apart and I was so upset with the Lord and then a little bit later I kind of followed back fell back into that and it kind of came into my opportunity again and it got a second time and now looking back like years later it was like five or six uh, I mean probably almost 10 years past this happening and I'm learning different things and you see what's going on in the world and you see this stuff with like the Illuminati and just all this devil stuff and all this how people are lost and they're and I'm thinking like wow I thank God now that he would let this stuff fall apart because as ambitious as I was I could have been caught up in that I had met a choreographer that had had worked with Beyonce, worked with Usher, worked with all these really named people that wanted to hire me as a choreographer. Yeah. All these stuff that, like, imagine if I would have went down there, how lost I would be and caught up in the world That's and right. so far from the Lord. So I thank God. And sometimes we, we that was Davina's wishes. That was my dreams. That was my goal. And that was my me on the throne. That was not the Lord leading my life. And now I thank God because I'm not lost in swept up like that which I would have been if God didn't allow me, if he didn't tell me no and take it from me when I thought he was doing something bad he was saving my life and saving my soul mm. now let me add to that <laughs> add to sense before I married my husband I was dating a guy for a few months I dreamt, I thought this dream came from God. For those of you men and women who think God has pointed out your spouse, you better fast and pray about that bad boy. Listen, I dated this guy for a few months and I had a friend. She was my best friend, she still is. And she kept saying, she kept saying this one phrase and she got on my last nerve. We laugh at it now. And what she kept saying to me was, Pat, you be careful. Any old port in the store will do. Remember that. Any old port in the store will do. And I'm thinking, why you have to be so negative, right? But I didn't throw it out because I knew God just might possibly be talking through her, even though I didn't want to hear it because I knew what I wanted. And you know how it is when we want what we want. So it turned out God started showing me things. He told me, check this out. Look over here. Listen to that. Watch that. And I'd be like, whoa. And <laughs> he told me, break up with him. And, and if, when you break up with him, he will be married within seven days. And I'm like, I don't want him to get married. I want him to marry me. But I knew God knew, so I had to do what he said. And I broke up with him. And seven days later, he called me to tell me he was sorry, but he had gone on and got married. <laughs> I was heartbroken. And one night I dreamt, I'm telling you how God ministers to us. One night I dreamt that I was on a caravan with a church choir and we were heading to another state, another city, whole area we didn't know anything about. We had been on the road for several hours, suitcases and all. And every car was packed. I was a passenger in one. We pulled over. 
once we got to the city and everybody is looking for that that was a time in the dream there was no cell phone everybody was looking for the address everybody was looking for the name of the place everybody was looking for a phone number everybody had the map how to get to the city but nobody had anything else there was no destination listen to this it's bizarre there was no destination there was no contact there was nothing and we were so disgusted we said well there's nothing left to do but turn around and go back home that's what we did we got ready to get back in the car I got ready to get back in the car I was in and my place listen to this my place was taken telling you how God ministers to us now. This is an inner healing dream. My place was taken. Now you wonder, what does that have to do with inner healing? I'll tell you in a second. I waved that car on because I do the math. That means somebody from another car hooked up with a friend of theirs, and now my purse, all my stuff is in that car. It's gone. So I'm waving on the other cars to come on and let me know if they have an opening in their car. And each one said, no, we're full. I wave them on, go to the next one. No, we're full. I wave them on, go to the next. After I got through all the cars, I went to wave to the next car and there was no more. And I'm standing there alone. I felt so devastated with that loneliness. I felt so abandoned. I had no way to contact anybody. No money, no ID, no nothing. So I'm standing there with tears running down my face in a place I know nothing about. It wakes me up out of the dream. And God spoke to me. Oh, I'm telling you. God spoke to me. That's why you thank him in trials. God spoke to me and said, you were in a relationship. This is the Holy Spirit interpreting the dream. You were in a relationship that had no destination. And now your place has been taken by someone else. And you feel alone. And God let me know, no, you're not alone. And the song that flooded my mind was trust in God. Now, I'm not crying because of the heartbreak. I'm crying because of my gratefulness to how God ministers to us in our darkest hours when we're focused on him. And the song said, all things work for our good, though sometimes we can't see how they could struggles that break our hearts in two sometimes blind us to the truth but our father knows what's best for us his ways are not our own so when you can't see him and your pathway grows dim remember you're never alone god is too wise to be mistaken god is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand and you can't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Mm -mm -mm. He alone is faithful and true. He alone knows what is best for you. And when he ministered that song and interpreted that dream to me, the healing began. And I was able to disengage over a short course of time from the relationship that was not meant to be. As Davina said, God said no. And I, to this day, thank him because I would have missed out on my beautiful husband of 15 years. And I probably, I might have been in jail for hurting the other guy. Who knows what that would have turned out to be. But God knew. He knew what was best for me. And he did not want me living a life of chaos, volatile, 
uh, violence, uh, confusion. He didn't want me to live in that kind of life. And he protected me from it with one word, no. And he confirmed it with my friend yakking in my ear. Any old port in the storm will do, Pat. You be careful with this guy. Always be grateful. Always be thankful because God always has your best interest at heart. God bless you. I hope that helps somebody.